got to create a target audience. That's going another layer deeper, right? Who's my target audience? So with Facebook and really Google, um, there is, when we're in the housing category of advertising, we can't do a lot of differentiation. We've got to just say it's got to be like 18 to 65. You know, you can't go much beyond that. But what you can do is you can say uh, you can search by people that have interest in the, in housing or interest. They have looked at houses in the last 30 days or 60 days. So that is a way you can search by uh, interest levels. So that's one thing I would do on, the, on when you're creating your audiences um, so that you'll get a much more engaged audience. Yeah, I heard that recently where, you know, Facebook is really smart at figuring that out based on whether they've been on Zillow or they've been on Realtor.com and they kind of know where else they're searching to pull together that target audience. Um, 100%. For, and I think for this, because, you know, some people who are like, man, I want to implement this in my business, but I'm already like a little bit overwhelmed. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Facebook does like prompt you through this. Like if you have an idea, yes. <laughs> it will literally be like, we want this data. Click next. Is that Yes, it's very, very, I wouldn't call it simple, but it is very point and click. If you've, if you're able to navigate your MLS, you're able to navigate Facebook Ad Builder. It's not that complicated. It will okay. maybe take you a minute or two, but there's also, you know, something to be said for some people that, um, are just like have a, a fear of technology almost. You still have to do these things. So it's not like you can just say, I'm not going to do this because you're going to get run over by the competition who is doing it. Right. So what you have to do is say, okay, if it's not going to be me, who's, who is it going to be? So you say who, not how. If it's beyond your scope to learn how to do it, then hire somebody who will do it that can do it. And you can find really any kid, any college kid is going to be able to figure out Facebook ad builder. It's super simple. Um, and they'll jump in and you can say, hey, here's this idea. I want you to implement this. And they'll, they'll, they'll create it for you. Okay. So to bring it back, if you were starting over today, you would embrace technology in the form yes. of an example using technology to generate leads and that marketing piece of your business using both buyer and seller lead magnets through an example being Facebook ads yes. and question with the ads. So, you know, they've walked through, they've clicked the buttons, whatever we're set up, how much per week, per month, like what, what is the ad spend that you would recommend? Not much. I mean, for me, it would be, um, I would, you always want to be testing it and, you know, seeing what works and what doesn't work. I'd start at $5 a day. So $5 a day times 30 days is $150 a month. That's a really good starting point for, for a lot of agents. And then if you see traction though, and you say, Hey, I, I got three buyers that were live buyers that I was able to start working with and it's really gaining traction every week. Then I would ramp it up. I'd say, okay, let's go from 150 to $300 a month. Now let's go to $600 a month. Just ramp it up as, as it gets bigger and bigger for you. Yeah, that makes sense. It's um, red light, green light, you know, red kind light, of green light. Exactly. <laughs> you hit the hit the gas pedal a little bit. Is this working? Pause, you know, and then, right. then push the gas a little, little harder there. OK, gotcha. Exactly. So I'm at the point I understand how much I should do for ad spend in the beginning. And then uh, so this ad is going out to the target audience that you've decided on Facebook and people are clicking. And you mentioned instant form on Facebook not direct to a website. What is your reasoning behind that? You, because you'll, you'll lose some people between the point that they click and they say, uh, okay, now I'm going off of Facebook. In fact, Facebook kind of puts up a little bit of a wall and it will say, you're now leaving Facebook. And people are like, oh, I don't want to leave Facebook. I'm going to stay on Facebook. So you want to make it super easy and I would call it frictionless so that they don't have any friction in, in filling out the lead form. They can just fill it out on Facebook they can then you captured their lead, and then the next step is they get the link, and it will still take them off the off the website at that point. But at that point, you've already collected the lead, so you've already got the lead. That's the difference, and it's a big difference. It'll 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 probably increase your lead capture by a minimum of twenty percent, in my opinion. Yeah, friction, making it as simple as possible in pretty much everything in real estate. If you make it easy for people, they're way more likely to do do the thing. 